one of the things you mentioned the marketing let's just get that out of the way right one of the things that you and i specifically have definitely talked about back and forth on and off this you know podcast especially is the fact that japan is on some shit okay there's just no other way to say it like you know that's the nicest way i can put it right they are it's like and i made this analogy i'm pretty sure you're gonna remember this they are like the neighbor right on a block you have a block say say the whole world is living on the same street okay i remember when you made this analogy on twitch japan is literally that one neighbor that they're nice to you right if they see you you walking across the street or whatever and they see you see them they'll say hello but if they don't they're not gonna like wave you down and they're not gonna because in like internally they are more likely not just, yeah just they, they are the way that their nature is they are just gonna want to keep to themselves as best as they possibly can while pretending low-key that they're the only ones that live on that street and i don't understand why they act like that why do they go out of it's like they're literally going out of their way to do all this when the world is constantly evolving and changing and you know like especially now with media and entertainment like dude like like i used to i I don't know i don't know if you were like this but back when i was super young like i'm talking like 12 13 14 years old that's when i first started getting into importing video games and like there was a reason behind it because those games were not coming out in the u.s or they were not coming out for years right so nowadays you fast forward time there's no point in importing anything really like you there has to be like that really niche you know like game that is just so obscure that only is going to be released in japan but nowadays everything is global right so there's no point in in you know even importing stuff anymore but the point that i'm trying to make is that everything is evolving and changing and yet here we have toei our favorite right known for so much shit good they love youtubers they love youtubers oh oh, yeah Yeah, they really love us that's what i was yeah that's what i was definitely uh nodding off to right there okay they are they are known for all of the ups and downs the downs being the youtubers like you said the ups being the you know the wonderful thing known as dragon ball right that they that they that they deliver to us in it's you know, not just toei it's also square enix too because we get we get like dragon quest also mm. has dealt with the same BS, bro. Dragon Quest tens never come out here, and they have like offline versions. It it really, which are t- two of my favorite franchises of all time, is Dragon Ball and Dragon Quest, and they have blue balled us for literally decades, bro. Final Fantasy used to have this problem, but not anymore. Oh yeah, and no. it, it, it's really because what frustrates me is that with Broly, Broly came out in December. And then came out in January in North and South America. So it was about three to four weeks. We got it. You didn't have to wait that long. Nice. With um, this movie, it's actually two and a half, well, about two months, two months, like 10 weeks, two months. And it's like, why are we going backwards? And I understand that they, I understand that Toei did a lot of research on what character is popular. And they went with Broly because he's popular worldwide, right? I get that. But if you've already established that you can put a movie out within a month of it coming out in Japan or three weeks or whatever, why are we going backwards now? They literally don't give a damn about anything but the Japanese. That's number one. That's number one. Everybody else number two, which is fine. But don't get mad that your movie gets pirated by people who are wanting to see it because you're not giving it to them what happened with dragon ball super the anime dragon ball super the anime took a year and a half before it got dubbed and that was toei's fault because they were salty at team four star being in kai and at the fact that kai didn't draw ratings on nicktoons they blamed funimation for it so they blue balled funimation on dragon ball super for a year and a half who ends up paying for that you do not the fans 
Because people online already saw this shit when it first happened. But the, the <laughs> casual fans on, on Cartoon Network or the, the little kids or the people who work on this shit, they're the ones losing. The, it's like they're cutting off their own hand. I don't get it, bro. Seems and by the fun. way, this ain't even a secret. I talked about it on my channel. Right. This English drub, this English dub trailer that came out today, yep. this was done like last week. This has been in the can for a week and a half already. Yeah, because... Why are they... Wh- but I, they didn't release it till now, bro. Yeah, I remember because uh, you and Chronicles, you guys were like, it, 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 and at any moment, it's coming. Like, well, expect I told, the trailer. I'm the, one, I'm the one that told Chronicles that, bro. I was just saying. But yeah, that's true. That, no, it's true. It was, it was literally any day now, right? right? And it came out today. But why did they wait until after the movie was already in Japan? Remember... When Broly was first announced for New York Comic Con, they dropped the sub trailer and the dub trailer on the same day. Yell, yes, I but remember that. But now we have to wait? It's like they're going backwards. I don't understand. Because naturally, like at the end of the day, they are going to be all about themselves and their audience first. And it shows time and time again. You can look at examples outside of Dragon Ball, where like like Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo. They're not trying to preserve retro games. They don't care. They've oh, made it. Oh yeah. They've made it a point. They've literally recently said like we have no plans of preserving any type of retro stuff. Like they're just they they don't care when it comes to Shonen Jump. There can be a manga or several that American readers can actually enjoy, right? But as long as Japan says, eh. You said it, you mentioned that about the Spider-Man manga, right? Oh, my God. Okay. And, that and was not, just not that. jump, but yes, that, that applies too. Right, but think about this one, bro. How come we get the Dragon Ball Super manga the same day the Japanese get it now? It it literally it literally is the exact same day. Yep. But this movie, we got to wait 2 months? It's just not fair, man, cuz people there's people who have money that they are willing to spend and they're not going to there's folks, bro, who are not going to spend that money cuz once they see it online, they don't like it. Now, luckily, most people did like Dragon Ball Super Superhero based on what I've seen. It's got a tremendous positive. Uh, most of the fans that I've seen in my comment section love it. But there's some people who say, well, you know, I didn't like it. Or some say I didn't like the villain. Or um, it's not as good as Broly. I don't think it's quite as good as Broly. But it got a lot closer than I was expecting. Because I went into this film with very low expectations. And they threw a lot of surprises. And what really what surprised me most about this movie is how good the fight scenes were. Oh. I was kind of blown away by that. Because, okay. like, there's... I, I, I've already said this on Twitter, bro. There are four professional wrestling moves used in this movie, bro. Four. Oh, I didn't even see that tweet. Oh, that's that... Good shit. 